Hello, it's February in Quebec, Canada. You know what that means? That means it's minus 30 outside and it's freezing. So we are gonna go take a trip with BZ4. It's telling me I've got 500 kilometers of autonomy right now. I'm gonna put on the heat. I'm gonna put on Echo and Odo and it drops to 381 kilometers. And this again is a pure estimate. I don't expect to get this. So this Toyota BZ4, it's a 2023 and it's the front wheel drive. Uh, I'm in snow and ice and it, it is uh, seriously cold outside uh very good traction so far i mean part of that obviously is uh very good tires and newer tires so that certainly helps it along um with these temperatures though it's interesting to note that uh, all you know everything's being tested on the car uh the defrost and the ventilation and everything else has got to uh, i put it at 18 i'm having no problem i'm getting some decent uh, heating and I haven't even turned on the radiating heat right now. Um, the estimation, I mean, we've only done about three kilometers and the estimation's already dropped 272 kilometers. Uh, I suspect that uh, we're gonna be seeing a lot lower than we usually do with these types of temperatures. Really, you've got a thermal pump that ideally um, wants slightly warmer temperatures than this. And by slightly, I mean a lot warmer. So it's still pumping out uh, heat so from that point of view it's still efficient at minus 30 so it's a, a good thing for all of you out in uh, colder climates so in these extremes it still works now with the wind factor out there it's like minus 40 so it's just kind of crazy so apart from the heat pump uh one of the things is when you put it into echo mode and auto what it will do is it will give you heated steering the heated steering is unlike some of the other cars or even some of the other toyotas is all the way around so it's really nice from uh you know if you're not wearing gloves it's perfect and uh keep you nice and toasty the other thing is the radiant heat so they have this feature which is underneath the steering column and on the passenger side it's underneath where the glove box should be and there's no glove box in this model of car or suv and so um we basically it's one of those radiator um type of things where it, it heats up directly where you need it which is right where your legs are so it's a really nice feature and it's one way to stay nice and warm and it's very fast to turn on so it'll warm you up fairly quickly now in these temperatures uh if it's fogging up i've got to put a bit more uh, more fan on and so forth just to keep uh, the the, the fog and the uh, the icing, I guess if it was snowing or raining at these types of temperatures or when rain, but it would snow, uh, I'd be a little crazy because it would ice up immediately. That's always a uh, interesting uh, trip when that happens. Uh, apart from that, really, you've got the heated seats as well that will turn on. So from that point of view, they're trying to cocoon you in and they're trying to keep you at a decent temperature. Now, in the ideal conditions, what you'd want to do is try to survive with the heated seats and the steering wheel that's heated and the radiant heat and not put on the heat pump since that consumes a lot of power however um realistically it's just too cold and the windshield just keeps fogging up so i have no choice but to keep that on so obviously this is going to affect our range dramatically and i understand that the range on this suv is very affected by the temperature unlike some of the other models uh, or other brands i should say such as the tesla and so forth uh while they'll be losing you know 10 15 percent um the toyota right now from what i'm able to tell it's more like 30 33 percent so it really is an impactful loss of range so if you need this and you were tight in you know zero degree temperature or just freezing um then as soon as it drops this severely below, you're going to see a huge hit to the range. And of course, that is a problem. Um, if you purchase this strictly for very local driving, then, you know, it might still be okay. But just to keep that in mind, especially if you're looking into buying one of these, um, from a philosophical point of view, obviously, the more you wait to purchase an EV, the better the range you will get. And the improvements in battery technology and, of course, in efficiency will keep getting you know better and better and so you will end up with better products in the future but in the meantime uh this is what we have right now the uh the ride however is very well you know very good so i mean for what it's lacking in range it really makes up for in the quietness of the cabin um it's again it stays nice and warm and everything is uh it's very smooth the suspension is even at this type of temperature 
uh, hitting potholes and then pieces of ice and so forth. It's very sure on the road. It's got very good handling. I never feel like it's uh, slipping or doing anything like that. Now, if you've got smaller vehicles, you tend to have seen that. Um, so right now, my biggest complaint, and maybe I'm keeping the uh, ventilation a bit lower, is the front windshield is fogging up. Well, the wind is pretty intense. You probably can't uh, see or <laughs> visualize just how uh, crazy windy it is, but it's very um, pushing the, the snow. It's making little snow squalls and so forth onto the road. And so it, it and it also is creating some black ice underneath the small layer of snow out on the road. But uh, again, the the SUV seems very well balanced. It has a very low center of gravity, so it helps. It's very um, it has very good grip. And this is not a, a four wheel drive, so I'm pretty impressed with it. So in these extreme conditions, one of the things you got to keep in mind is: is everything still open? Does everything still work properly? Because sometimes you'll have hatches or hoods that don't open properly. Uh, of note, and we saw this with the RAV4 earlier, you'll notice that there is condensation in here. So it's inside, it froze inside of the headlights, and you'll notice the other headlight actually has the same problem here. So I was told on the RAV4 specifically that there were some uh, holes built in there to get rid of the condensation or the humidity out of the headlights. I'm not sure if that's accurate or not. All I know is um, it doesn't seem to be a beach problem right now. I don't know how much worse this would get. So I guess we'll have to keep uh, an eye on it. Now, if minus 30, obviously things will not work so far. The doors work. <coughs> it's so cold, I got problems breathing. Um, the, you know, the wipers and everything else are functional. And uh, since there's no sunroof on here, I don't know about that. But anyway, so, so far, great to drive. Really cold, though. I'd rather be inside. So let's get back in the car and drive back. So if you were wondering what happens at these really extreme cold temperatures, well, it turns out the BZ4 really can deliver a comfort in heat to the occupants. So that's on the bright side, because the last thing you want to do is, you know, be on a highway somewhere and just freeze. So, of course, you're sacrificing range. However, if you're, uh, you know, you're still within that range and you're just uh, getting around, it's not a problem. Now, I've driven about 30 kilometers. Um, again, it, these extreme uh, temperatures and the wind and the snow and everything else is just uh, bananas driving wise. But as an occupant, you always feel cocooned. You always feel nice and comfortable. And with the, you know, the steering wheel and everything else, you're, you're really comfortable. You're, it's like you're watching a movie almost. Um, where you don't feel affected by the elements that much. Uh, you still have a, a slightly um, harder suspension, I guess, at these temperatures where you feel the bumps a little more than you would otherwise, or at least that's my impression of it. I don't know if it's just my imagination. Uh, the consumption on here, and again, for those of you who don't have EVs, uh, might get annoyed, but this is, a, you know, we're looking at about 34.5 uh, kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So, in other words, um, on a, you know, 62 kilowatt uh, battery, I mean, you should be able to drive this for a few hours and still have a bit of reserve left. Now, I'm not driving extremely fast, um, and it's obviously counterintuitive because in the traditional car you've got engine the faster you go the more engine works the, the you know the warmer it gets and you you basically get free heat uh, with this car with this suv you obviously have to use up some power to generate heat and so at all times you're consuming whether you're going slow or fast and of course you're going fast it's even worse because then not only are you you know using more power for the engine but you're also um you know, generating heat along for the uh, the windshield and everything else to keep you fog free and nice and cozy inside of the vehicle. So I'm Bob Pellow and CT Bob. I hope this video was useful to some of you to know what kind of handling you're going to get out of a BZ4 and what kind of comfort you can expect in extreme colds. So far, I'm relatively uh, pleased. I'm going to live with the range decrease. I mean, that's I bought this understanding that this was going to be a challenge in the winter and uh, I'm willing to live with it. So leave some comments below. We'd love to hear back from you, no matter where you are, as to whether this is affecting you. And I'd really like to hear about perhaps our uh, friends out in the south that have the opposite problem where it gets really, really warm 
or hot, <laughs> best word for it. And um, how, you know, it works with the air conditioning and what kind of battery uh, range decrease you get from using the AC. I would love to hear uh, about that. Maybe just to give me some warm thoughts in these cold days up here in the north. So we'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.